Hi everyone, welcome to my channel that provides you with history and we are still focusing on South African. In this episode, we will look at life and legacy of the man considered to be the father of apartheid in South Africa. Let us uncover the story of Hendrik Verwerd. 1901 The South African landscape shimmered under the bright sun, a land of potential and turmoil. Indigenous communities, British settlers, and Afrikaners coexisted amidst the complexities of colonial rule. Born in 8 September 1901 in the Netherlands, Johannes Gerhardus Hendrik Verwerd moved to South Africa with his parents when he was two years old. He studied psychology and philosophy in South Africa and later earned a doctorate in philosophy from the University of Stellenbosch. Verwerd became a professor of applied psychology at the university and wrote extensively on the topic. In the 1920s a young Hendrik Verwerd listened intently in a university lecture hall, captivated by discussions on nationalism, race, and the preservation of Africana culture. Studying at Stellenbosch University, Verwerd became deeply influenced by nationalist ideologies and the belief in the superiority of the Africana people. Verwerd's political career began in the 1940s when he joined the National Party, a political party that promoted apartheid policies. In 1948, the NP came to power, and Verwerd played a significant role in implementing and enforcing apartheid as a government official. He served as the Minister of Native Affairs, later renamed Bantu Affairs, and later became the Minister of Internal Affairs. Verwerd is often referred to as the architect of apartheid, due to his instrumental role in formulating and implementing the policy. He is credited with conceptualizing and implementing the policy of grand apartheid, which aimed to separate different racial groups geographically and politically, with a particular focus on the forced removal of non-white populations to designated areas, including townships. More on townships late in the episode. In the 1950s, Verwerd rose to power within the National Party, becoming the Minister of Native Affairs and later, the Prime Minister. His charisma and conviction commanded attention. His policies laid the foundation for apartheid. In his biography of the man Verwerd, architect of apartheid in 2016 Henry Kenny noted that Verwerd had a dominating personality, and those who came under his influence found him irresistible. This seems to have been one of those cases where that much abused word, charismatic, was applicable. Verwerd's intellectual powers were clearly formidable. Supremely self-confident, he never doubted the correctness of his views. It was an outstanding characteristic of Verwerd that, once having made up his mind, it was virtually impossible to make him change it. Verwerd delivered a speech to a captivated crowd at a town hall meeting. He advocated for the strict implementation of apartheid policies, emphasizing the separation of races. Verwerd championed apartheid, arguing that separate development and racial segregation were necessary to preserve the culture, traditions, and economic stability of South Africa. One of his famous quotes was, What is the use of teaching the Bantu child mathematics when it cannot use it in practice? That is quite absurd. Education must train people in accordance with their opportunities in life, according to the sphere in which they live. This famous quote is still alive in South Africa today, as the standard of education is still different for white South Africans compared to other races. Afrikaans language which was one of the official languages during apartheid and well developed is still the only language in South Africa which a child can start with in kindergarten to PhD level even though post-democracy there are 12 official languages in the country. More on South African standard of education in later videos and what has the current government done or not done to improve other languages. The townships era in South Africa have a complex and historically rooted formation that can be traced back to the country's apartheid era. During the apartheid regime, which lasted from 1948 to 1994, Racial segregation was enforced by law, and the government forcibly relocated non-white population groups, particularly black Africans, to designated areas called townships. As part of Verwerd's Group Areas Act. Under Verwerd's leadership, apartheid laws intensified, 
leading to forced removals and the relocation of millions of non-white South Africans to designated areas known as townships. These townships were established to separate different racial groups and maintain the dominance of the white minority. Under apartheid, millions of non-white individuals were forcibly removed from urban areas and relocated to townships on the outskirts of cities and towns. These removals were justified by the government as a means to separate races and create racially homogeneous areas. Townships were racially segregated, with separate areas designated for different racial groups. Black Africans were allocated areas that were often poorly developed and lacked basic infrastructure, such as proper housing, sanitation, and access to quality education and healthcare. The townships were typically characterized by inadequate infrastructure and limited services. The government invested significantly less in the development and maintenance of infrastructure within townships compared to predominantly white areas, perpetuating racial inequality. Townships became centers of resistance and resilience, as they became important hubs for community organizing, political activism, and cultural expression. Despite the oppressive conditions, townships fostered a strong sense of community and played a crucial role in the struggle against apartheid. Since the end of apartheid, efforts have been made to address the historical imbalances and uplift townships through various government programs and initiatives. These initiatives have aimed to improve infrastructure, provide basic services, and promote economic development in these areas. However, many challenges remain, and townships continue to face socio-economic disparities and high levels of poverty. It is important to note that the term, township, in South Africa can have different meanings depending on the context. In addition to historically designated areas, the term is sometimes used more broadly to refer to informal settlements or peri-urban areas that developed organically outside of formal urban planning processes. These informal townships often lack basic services and face their own unique set of challenges. Back to Verwerd. Verwerd faced condemnation and opposition to apartheid. However, he staunchly defended the system, claiming it as a means to maintain order and prevent conflict. Hendrik Verwerd's legacy as the father of apartheid is a complex and controversial one. While his policies created deep divisions and immense suffering, they also sparked resistance and the eventual dismantling of apartheid. Hendrik Verwerd left a complicated legacy. While his policies were divisive and led to immense suffering, they also shaped the South Africa we know today. It is vital to remember and learn from this chapter of history. Despite his significant influence and controversial policies, Verwerd's life was tragically cut short. On September 6, 1966, he was assassinated while serving as the Prime Minister of South Africa. A parliamentary messenger named Dimitri Safenders stabbed Verwerd in the neck during a session of Parliament, and he died shortly afterward. Despite doctors' best efforts, his injuries were too severe. A nation mourned the loss of a controversial figure who shaped its history. Verwerd's adult life was marked by his commitment to apartheid policies and his role in implementing and defending them. While some viewed him as a staunch defender of Africana interests, his policies and actions have been widely condemned both within South Africa and internationally for their inherent racism and human rights violations. Remember, understanding the past helps us shape a better future. If you liked the content consider subscribing, like and comment for more South African history videos. And ah! Uh...